Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the Maxim Defense PDX. It is a very small little rifle in this case. This is a factory SBR. This is the property of Copper Custom. But I wanted to talk about it because we had previously shown a pistol version of the gun that was chambered in 762 by 39 We got all sorts of performance data in that past video with regards to 762 by 39 and 300 blackout, so we're not going to rehash that in this video. I just want to talk about the 300 blackout version of this firearm. But before we get started with today's video, guys, please, if you like our content, take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. And also comment down below because we do enjoy reading those comments and it also helps us out with the algorithms. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please again, check out BDU. The PDX, as the story goes, was developed for a tier one uh, undefined military unit. And um, I would suspect, and I could be wrong about this, that it competed against perhaps the SIG Rattler for the same contract. I don't know, pure speculation, but given the specs are so similar between this and the SIG Rattler, it would make sense that perhaps they went up against each other for that, that contract. But what makes this thing so unique? There are several features I want to point out about this firearm that I think you guys are going to find interesting, and I'll try to move through them as quickly as I possibly can. Now, we have already talked about this gun in 7.62x39, and I wasn't all that impressed. At first, I was really excited about it because 7.62x39 is very affordable as compared to 300 Blackout, even when the market is normal. But we discovered that the ballistics out of the short barrel with the 7.62x39 really didn't have much of an advantage over 300 blackout at all. And then when we put subsonics in the gun, it wouldn't run them unless we put a suppressor on it. When we put a suppressor on it, it way over gassed the gun, made it really unpleasant to shoot, blowing gas back in your face, all sorts of stuff. So that was less than impressive. But what really turned me off the 762 by 39 version of this is the fact that it uses AR-15 type magazines. And I have never found an AR-15 type magazine that is 100% reliable with 762 by 39 ammunition. Therefore, I lost interest in it. And I was very interested in trying out the 300 Blackout, hence today's video. So we're not going to rehash the ballistics and all that stuff. We've done a video on that previously. If you want to go see that, uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below so you can go watch the 7.62x39 uh, video. So real quickly, let's kind of move from the rear to the front of the gun and talk about some of the features. The first thing you're going to notice is the stock on this thing is very minimalistic. You have a very minimalistic footprint back here. You have two rails that run on either side of the receiver. You have a lever right here that will allow you to <laughs> extend or um, collapse it. It also has more than one, I think it's four total settings, but even at its full extension, it's really, really short. So when I run it, I usually run it at full extension. So if you want to fully extend it, just push that button, give a good yank and it will fully extend. Next, you're gonna notice the extension tube on this bad boy. This thing's only four inches long, guys. This is a lot shorter than your standard AR-15, which will dovetail into the conversation we're gonna have when we field strip it. A 3H driver can be used uh, to take this apart, stick it in the rear, re and, and you know, twist it, it'll come loose, no castle nut. On top here, we have a Radian Systems charging handle. We have a Radian Systems selector lever, and we have a Geisley trigger that comes factory in the gun. We have this truncated pistol grip. It still feels like a full-size pistol grip because I get my pinky around it. It doesn't dangle off into space. So uh, that's actually pretty good. The trigger is really nice because it is a Geisley. I'm going to go ahead and close this port cover. We have a standard magazine release there over here. Notice there's no uh, facilities over here for ambi uh, bolt release or bolt catch. Over on the left-hand side of the gun, we have an ambi magazine release, and then we have a standard ping pong paddle for your bolt stop bolt release. And we do have the ambi selector levers present on both sides of the gun. You're going to ask me about the red dot sight, no longer in production. Uh, very cool. It was made by uh, DI Optical. I wish I could get more of them. I think it looks really good on this gun, but yeah, sorry guys, they're not available anymore. So moving forward on the gun, we do have a pick rail, just standard 1913 rail across the top here. 
we get to the hand guard. Oh, before we get into that, it is uh, 70, 75 billet aluminum for the upper and lower receiver, because I know you guys are going to have that question. So this hand guard, this hand guard, believe it or not, is actually backwards compatible or compatible with an HK416. Uh, that's unobtainium, but if you happen to have one laying around, you can stick it on your Maxim Defense PDX. But it, besides that, you'll notice it has M-lock slots all the way around. And then this is a factory hand stop. This is an OSS silencer. I put that on it, uh, put this on it today because 300 blackout without a suppressor is pointless. But I want to caution you. If you take the original muzzle device off, which we'll talk about here momentarily, if you take that off and put a suppressor on it, it does void your warranty. Uh, and that's posted quite boldly on the Maxim Defense website. So I have basically voided my warranty on this gun by putting the OSS suppressor on it. It's also worth noting that this is actually a direct gas impingement firearm. So with all that being said, and it does use standard AR-15 magazines, of course. With all that being said, let's talk about the muzzle device that I took off the firearm. Now, as I'd mentioned, it is direct gas impingement. If you take a look at this two-piece muzzle device, which has a standard 5 8 by 24 thread on it, this muzzle device does several different things. First of all, it acts as a flash suppressor. And secondly, it acts as a booster. Think of an AKS-74U or a crank-off, that booster that's right in front of the front sight block. Uh, this acts as a booster uh, per the Maxim Defense website. So what does that mean? It means it traps gas much like a suppressor would, and causes back pressure in the barrel, which aids in function of the firearm by increasing the back pressure in the DI system with that short barrel. And then last but not least, it acts as a sound moderation device, but it's not an NFA item. Uh, it takes that concussive force from that short five and a half inch barrel. I don't think I mentioned that, it has a five and a half inch barrel. And it takes that concussive force and projects it downrange away from the shooter. So you're not getting you know, like if you've ever been on a firing range and somebody's firing a 308 with a, a muzzle brake on it, it's blasting that concussive force down the firing line. Uh, this does the exact opposite, sends it down range so people next to you don't get blasted with that concussion. Taking it off though, void your warranty. All right, guys, now let's take a look inside of the gun and see what changes they made to the operating system so they can make an AR-15 this tiny. Five hits at 250 yards using the 300 Blackout Super TTSX Barnes 110 Grainers. Let's take the gun apart and see what it looks like on the inside. First, we want to make sure the weapon's clear. Magazine is out, chamber's clear, and the weapon is on safe. Now, it's a little bit different than your standard AR-15 in that it does not clamshell open, meaning when you pop that rear pin on AR-15, the uppers and lowers kind of clam open, and you can take the guts out of it from there. This one's slightly different but it's not difficult to accomplish. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna grab the handguard here. I'm gonna put a little bit of downward pressure, not a whole bunch, and I'm gonna pop out the two pins, which are standard captive AR-15 pins. And then once I get the pins out, I'm gonna ease, easily release this and the, re the recoil spring, the buffer, it's gonna push it forward and you'll see how that rear lug clears that hammer and it'll just come forward. So that's where it's a little bit different than your standard AR-15. That's your buffer, very small. That's your recoil spring, very small. Aside from what's going on here back, everything up here is standard AR-15 fare. And again, there's that Geisley trigger in there. Taking the bolt and carrier group out, it's just like any other gun, pulling that radiant charging handle. Take your bolt and carrier out, and charging handle. Charging handle is nothing special. It, other than it's a Radian, it's a standard size. What is not standard size is this carrier. You'll notice it's cut quite differently. It's <clears throat> lightened and it works in conjunction with the buffer that sets somewhat into it. So and you can see now how the whole system works is one. So on this, Besides being cut off back here and truncated, we do have the 
the notches here for the forward assist. I don't think I mentioned that before. The gun does have a forward assist on it. But as we move forward, this is just a standard direct gas impingement gas key, properly staked uh, screws there, have a cotter pin and you know regular cam pin and a standard AR-15 bolt head. So uh, everything forward is standard AR-15 where all the differences are, are right here in the buffering system. And that's how they've made this so short back here. So you may ask yourself, well, how difficult is it to put back together? Well, it's really not that difficult. You know, you'll just do everything as you normally would with an AR-15, put your T-handle in there, put your bolt and carrier group in there, push it forward. I take the buffer, pop that in the rear, that allow me to push that bolt all the way home. Then you can just set your recoil spring on the buffer, slide that into the tube, and just push back. Boom. Different, but really no more difficult than your standard AR-15. So for the purposes of just testing the function of the gun with a suppressor on it, I'm gonna fire 20 rounds of the Barnes Super Sonic Loads, and I'm gonna fire 20 rounds of the Federal Subsonic Loads. We did have that one malfunction when we were confirming zero with the suppressor on, but uh, we've had no more malfunctions since then. When I was running the original hate break, I had no malfunctions. So I just wanna make sure that my suppressor is not gonna cause reliability issues with the PDX. It's gonna be an expensive test, but it's all in the name of, well, testing. Here go the supers first. All right, so that's one of the stove pipes that we had seen previously. I did see some erratic ejection. That's unfortunate. I may not be able to, uh, to run it with a no back pressure can. I may wind up having to put a back pressure can on it just to make sure it functions properly. Has one in the chamber there. Uh, darn it, gonna have to cock it. Yeah, I can't hit clamshell it open, so burn one. <laughs> but it locks open. I don't know. All right, we'll see how it does with the subs. And it was with the supers that we had the uh, malfunction when we were siding in. Seemed like we had far more consistent ejection with the subsonics, which is good because I primarily run subsonics out of guns like this. Maybe just uh, when things stabilize in the market, if I can get my hands on some different supers, maybe that'll re resolve my issue. Uh, it just may not like those 110 grain Barnes Black Hills loads. So um, we'll keep testing it. It's going to take a while because the cost of ammo and the scarcity of it. The PDX is available in three different calibers. We've already talked about 7.62 by 39, 300 blackout, which this one is, and then it's also available in 5.56. Now, a five and a half inch barreled 5.56, I don't really think there's much use for that. That's just, you know, for bragging rights, I guess, if you just really wanna rattle the teeth of the guy sitting next to you at the firing line. So uh, the two calibers I think that are most useful for this particular design would be the 7.62 by 39 or the 300 blackout. Now, the quality of the gun, I think, is extremely high but it should be because the price is extremely high. Full MSRP on this gun is $22.95, but I have, I just did a quick search online and I found companies like Rainier Arms selling the guns for right around $2,065. Still an expensive firearm by any stretch. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's gonna run pretty much neck and neck with the SIG Rattler in terms of performance, in terms of price. Although the SIG Rattlers in today's market are ridiculous, but under normal market conditions, this would be a direct competitor to that gun. So overall, yeah, I think it's really, really cool. I, I love it in 300 blackout. The only negative I can really say that I have for the gun is that 
if you remove that hate break and put a suppressor on it, you void your warranty. 300 blackout to me, uh, half of the equation is the ability to shoot subsonics with a silencer. If you just shoot supersonics, it's expensive. And then you maybe want to take a look at the 762 by 39, but then you have the magazine issue. So I don't know, 300 blackout, I like suppressing it. If I can't suppress it, then I really have very little interest in the firearm if it's chambered in 300 blackout. But anyway, so the gun, cool, check them out. Uh, they are probably, I think on their website, they're running about six to eight weeks behind if you want to place an order for one. And I'm assuming you're going to have to pay full MSRP if you order it from Maxim Defense. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, we're viewer supported. And if you would like to become part of our Patreon family, there is a link down below that gives you direct access to me. I answer all of our private, uh, all of your private communications. Also, you have access to a community where people interact with each other, and you also get early access to videos like this one. Again, there's a link to Patreon down in the description below. Also, right here on YouTube, got a little join button right underneath the video player you're looking at right now. Click that join button and consider supporting us here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.